1099 for uh, the year 2020. Now, I already have a video for creating 1099s and QuickBooks goes through a lot of the setup, uh, how to set up your vendors for 1099s and so forth. So I'm going to leave that, even though it only applies to the uh, form that is for 2019 and earlier. And I'm just going to make an update here for the new 2020 form. Because a lot of the preparation and so forth is still the same. So for uh, 2020, there's a form called 1099 NEC. And that form is for reporting uh, purchases of services that we make. So... Um, all the things that used to go on a 1099 miscellaneous in box 7, that is uh, repair work, subcontractors, janitorial, all those kinds of things where we paid for services for somebody from our business, that all now goes on a form 1099 NEC. I've been waiting for QuickBooks to update to make that capability available in the software, and I've been waiting quite a while. In fact, I just saw the update come through for QuickBooks 2020 yesterday morning. And so that's what I'm using in the videos, QuickBooks 2020. I don't see where QuickBooks 2021 or 19, any of the supported versions besides 2020 have been updated yet, but they should be in the next few days. So in any event, let's go ahead and take a quick look at this. I'm going to go to the vendors drop down menu, gonna down here to 1099 forms and print uh, e-file 1099. Then um, gives me a couple of uh, warnings, and not really warnings, but informational messages here. It, it basically, it's telling you if you've got something that a, a vendor that you need to prepare a 1099 miscellaneous for, and their expenses are recorded in a certain expense account, but you have vendors that you also need to prepare a 1099 NEC and their expenses are reported in the same expense account that you should make two different expense accounts in QuickBooks and uh, uh, divide up those uh, expenses. And there's a, uh, in the QuickBooks help section, actually on the, on the web, they have a document that tells you how to do that. I, as, I, as I think about it, I just don't see how that can be very common as we're still going to use 1099 miscellaneous for things like rent, which is usually the only other thing that a small business would have besides the purchases of services. So services, which are going to be in you know, subcontractor expense, repair expense, and so forth, are going to be my 1099 NEC. Rent expense could be my 1099 miscellaneous if I had that. So that's the warning or the informational message. Yes, we'll go ahead and click through that. This screen is new. Now, the first time you do this, QuickBooks is gonna make you do a backup. Just go through that process and make your, uh, your backup copy. But you see, we have two sections now. We have a 1099 NEC and 1099 miscellaneous. Well, we wanna prepare the 1099 NEC. So I'll click Get Started. Again, same as the last video, procedure pretty much the same. Here's the vendors that are marked as eligible for 1099. You would want to be sure that all that was up to date. Here is the address information and the um, federal ID numbers for those businesses. You want to be sure that's up to date. Here are the uh, different expense uh, what do I want to say, expense accounts, categories that have been used for 1099 vendors in this particular sample file. So all of these that I can see as I go down the list here, I'm going to put those in box one of NEC. We, we purchase services from these people. Uh, furniture and fixed asset. No, no, we don't want that. Rent expense. No, we don't want that. That would go on a 1099 miscellaneous, right? So I'm going to click continue. And I'm not going to look at the reports. I'm going to just click continue again. Here are the 1099s that um, QuickBooks is proposing to create. So one to Middlefield Drywall for $1,500, another one to VU Contracting for almost 46000 
you see there's an unmapped payment over here, 5,000. Well, because I'm familiar with the file, of course, and I did some setup work, I know what that is. That is rent expense. Which, so Davis Business Associates is marked as a 1099 vendor, right? But they're going to get a 1099 miscellaneous, not a 1099 NEC. So QuickBooks is, is seeing that 5,000, and it's picking up the fact that this is a 1099 vendor, but it's not going to be mapped to a 1099 NEC. It's going to go on the other form. So everything here looks uh, correct. If, if we were to take a look here, and again, most of these setup issues are addressed in the other video, but just to give a quick little glance at what's back here, this is a CU Electric has a amount that would normally go on a 1099 NEC, but there's that $600 limit, right? We have to, it has to be $600 or more for the year, then we would have to send them a 1099, and we only spent 532 with uh, CU Electric, so QuickBooks is not going to create a 1099 for them. Same, uh, same thing with Larson Flooring down here. If I double click on that, it's 400 and some odd dollars. It's just not going to meet the threshold. So I click uh, Continue, Print Forms, 1099 NEC. That came up on my other monitor. Let me drag that down here. In the sample file, 2023 is last year. And again, it's coming up on my other monitor. So there we go. There's the two, 90, uh, the two 1099s that are going to print. I can click on Preview. There we go. And that... Let me see if I can pull that over here. It really doesn't tell you much. Um, sorry, I can't get that to, uh, to be a little bit more visible on the screen. But you get the idea. So the 1099 is going to look like this. There's going to be two on a page. We have to print 1099s on forms. That's the reason this doesn't look like it makes any sense in the preview uh, view here because it's just showing on a plain piece of paper. And ordinarily, we would be printing that on a form. So all of these pieces of information would be in a particular box on that form. You can also print the 1096 uh, right there, print 1096, which is the summary form that you send in with the IRS copies to tell the IRS there should be 18 1099s here and they should total X number of dollars. All that is the same. The procedure is pretty much the same. It's just going to be divided between the 1099 NEC and the 1099 miscellaneous. So when I finished this, if this were my business and I were actually doing this, when I finished this process and I printed those 1099 NECs, I would go back and I would start the process again, only I would choose the 1099 miscellaneous. And who's going to come up? Well, that Davis Business Associates, there's going to be one 1099 miscellaneous because that's for rent expense. So again, if you have questions about who needs a 1099 and why and and how to set that up and how to get those vendors so they'll come up on the list and so forth. Take a look at that other video. It goes into all that. This is just meant to be an update on what we need to do that's new for the year 2020. Thanks.